so good day everyone welcome to my channel development rishi i am dev so in this video we are going to talk about exploring the system having familiarized ourselves with the file navigation it's now the opportune moment to embark on a guided exploration of our linux system prior to commencing we shall acquire additional knowledge of commands that will prove valuable throughout our journey in this video we we'll, we are going to look at the ls command the file command and the less command okay enhancing the experience with ls recognizing its widespread utility the ls command holds a prominent position as one of the most frequently employed commands its capabilities enable us to observe the contents of a directory or directories and a, a certain various crucial attributes associated with files and directories as demonstrated earlier a straightforward execution of ls provides us with a comprehensive list of files and subdirectories housed within the present working directory so for example if you are at your home directory and you just type ls it is going to list all the directories and files within your current working directory okay in addition to the current working directory it is possible to specify a particular directory for listing purposes by utilizing the following syntax so if we want to go to a particular directory let's say ls slash usr in this case the ls command will list all the files and directories inside the slash usr directory okay so when we press enter it is going to show all the files and folders within the slash usr directory furthermore it is also feasible to designate multiple directories for listing in the following illustration we will enumerate both users home directory presented by by the by this symbol and the slash usr directory so how we can achieve this is we just type ls this character and slash usr character so now what uh, what the ls command is going to do is going to list all the files and folders inside the home directory then it is going to list all the files and folders inside the slash usr directory okay here you go it has uh, categorized both the directories separately so it is easier for the user to understand which file or folder belongs to which directory okay another option available to us is modifying the output format to unveil more comprehensive details so let's say we can type ls minus l now it is going to show us even more detail information about your current directory okay by incorporating the minus l parameter into the command we have altered the output to the long format okay the so the minus l stands for the long format okay options and arguments this leads us to a crucial aspect regarding the functionality of most commands typically commands are accompanied by one or more options that modify their behavior as well as one or more arguments that represent the entities upon which the command operates therefore the general structure of most commands can be depicted as follows so you have a command then you pass any of the options such as minus l and then the argument such as the directory name okay the majority of commands utilize options that consists of a single character preceding by a hyphen such as minus l however numerous commands including those developed by the gnu project offer support for long options which consists of a word preceded by two hyphens additionally many commands allow the concatenation of multiple short options in the given example the ls command is provided with two option the l option to generate long format output and the t option to sort the output based on the modification time of the file okay so if we pass this command uh, in the terminal minus l t so what it is going to do is it is going to sort everything according to the date it was modified okay and you can reverse the order of the sort by including the dash dash reverse option in the command okay so so you can just add a reverse at the end of the command and now the output is going to be reversed okay so the oldest file will be on the top and the newest file will be at the bottom okay it's worth noting that command options similar to file names in linux are case sensitive the ls command offers a wide range of available options with the most frequently used ones listed in the following table okay so these are some of the options uh, that the ls command can take have a look through these 
and uh, understand what they are doing okay so for example over here we have the my uh, dash dash reverse option okay which we checked over here all right so exploring long format in greater details as demonstrated earlier when utilizing the minus l option ls uh, ls presents its result in long format offering a wealth of valuable information below is an illustration showcasing the example directory from an ubuntu based system okay so this is how the output is going to look like when you pass the minus l argument as we saw over here okay so now let's examine the various fields and delve into the their respective meanings okay so in this case we have dash rw and bunch of dashes that follows what does that mean the file access rights are denoted by the first character indicating the file type for instance a leading dash signifies a regular file whereas b signifies a directory okay so if the first character is a dash that means it's a file but if it's a d that means it's a directory okay the subsequent three characters represents the access rights for the file's owner followed by three characters for members of the files group and the final three characters for everyone else the comprehensive understanding of this aspect is elaborated upon in chapter number nine permissions okay so files number of hard disk links see the discussion on links later in this chapter all right so this means how many links are pointing towards this particular directory or file okay the me or is the username of the files owner so in this case the user was me so over here the user was dev rishi okay so this is the username who owns the file okay and then the name of the group that the user belongs to uh, then the next character is the size in bytes okay and then you have the date of well, last modification over here and then finally you have the name of the file all right identifying the types of file using the file command as we navigate through the system it becomes advantageous to ascertain the contents of files to accomplish this we can utilize the file command to determine the files type as previously mentioned file names in linux do not necessarily indicate the actual content of a file although a file name like a dot png my conventionally imply a png image linux does not enforce this requirement we can invoke the file command in the following manner okay so you will type the command file and then the name of the file okay upon invocation the file command will display a concise description of the file's contents for instance let's have a look so over here uh, we have one file called 2023-06-16 and so on so let's check this file out so we'll call file 2003-6-16 the terminal has applied a slash uh, backward slash to imply that uh, this space which was present here is part of the file name okay that's why it has added that backward slash so once we press enter it is going to tell us that it's a metroska data okay or an mkv file so over here we had a png file uh, so it gave a description of that file accordingly it's a png image data the resolution of the file the color palette and if it's interlaced or not okay a multitude of file types exist within unix like operating systems like linux in fact a fundamental principle embraced by such systems is the concept that everything is a file as we progress through our lessons we will witness the veracity of this statement and comprehend its significance while several files on your system system might be familiar such as mp3 and jpeg files uh, there exists a variety of file types that may be less evident as well as a few that are rather peculiar okay examining file contents using the less command the less command is designed as a text file viewer program within our linux system numerous files consists of human readable text the less program offers a convenient approach to inspecting such files so now what is text if you're wondering you can read through this portion okay so let's check out the command let's on a file which is a dot txt file right the examination of text files holds significance due to the presence of system setting file also known as configuration files stored in this format being able to read these files provide valuable insights into the system's functioning moreover numerous programs utilize 
by the system referred to as scripts are also stored in text format in subsequent chapters we will delve into the process of editing text files to modify system settings and create our own scripts however for now our focus will primarily be on inspecting their content okay so how do you use the less command you type less and then the name of the file okay once initiated the less program enables you to navigate through a text file both forwards and backwards for instance to inspect the file that specifies all user accounts within the system and input the following command okay so let's copy this and paste it here okay so we have less slash etc slash p a s s w d so what we are saying is uh, we are asking the terminal to open the file that is inside the etc directory called pass w d okay so once we press enter it is going to show all the content within that file okay so if you uh, press the down arrow key it is going to scroll down within that file and if you press the up arrow key it is going to scroll up once you have reached the end of the file you will see uh, this end written at the end of the terminal okay once the list program is launched we can gain access to the files content if the file extends beyond a single page we can scroll both upwards and downwards to exit the list program simply press the q key okay so when you want to exit out of the program you just type the q key and you're out of the file okay below is a table representing frequently used keyboard commands in less let's take a guided tour the arrangement of the file system on your linux system closely resembles that found in other unix like systems this design is defined by the linux file system hierarchy standard which is a published standard governing the file system structure while not all linux distributions adhere to the standard in its entirety the majority of them closely align with its guidelines now we will explore the file system first hand to gain insight into the inner workings of our linux system this will provide an opportunity for you to practice your navigation skills along the way we will uncover numerous intriguing files that are presented in easily readable human text format as we embark on this tour feel free to try the following actions cd into a given directory list directory contents using the ls-l command when you encounter a captivating file utilize the file command to ascertain its contents if the file appears to be text based consider using the less command to view its content okay so this is a little exercise for you to try it yourself all right next while navigating through the system don't hesitate to explore and examine various elements regular users are generally restricted from making any critical changes as that falls under the responsibility of system administrator if a command raises an issue or error simply move on to take another task or area okay take your time to observe and explore remember in linux there are no hidden secrets and and the system is open for our exploration the table below highlights a selection of directories that can be delved into don't hesitate to explore additional directories beyond those listed okay so while you're doing this exercise over here these are some of the directories that you might be interested in and in checking out okay have a look around and move through these directories and see what you find open a bunch of files and see what they contain now symbolic links while exploring it's common to come across a directory listing that includes an entry similar to this okay so here you go so it will look like something like this with this arrow pointing towards a file all right so what does that mean take a note of the listing initial letter as l which is this and the presence of two file names which are this and this okay this signifies a special file known as a symbolic link or a sim link for sure symbolic links allows for multiple file names to refer to the same file providing a valuable and practical feature in most unix like system so if you're wondering what that means is you can look um, if you have used windows there are shortcuts that you can create for a file or a directory right so you can look at it like that okay but yeah remember these links 
came before Windows shortcuts. Okay, consider the following situation. There is a program that relies on a shared resource stored in a file called foo, which undergoes frequent version updates. It would be beneficial to include the version number in the file name so that the administrator and other interested parties can easily identify the installed version of foo. However, this poses a challenge. If we modify the name of the shared resource, we would need to lo locate every program that utilizes it and update their code to reference the new source name whenever a new version is installed. This process can be cumbersome and time consuming, certainly not an enjoyable task. Right. So symbolic links come to the rescue in this scenario. Let's consider the case where we installed version 2.6 of foo with the file name foo dash 2.6 and create a symbolic link named foo that directly points to foo dash 2.6 this means that when a program accessing the file foo it is actually accessing the file foo dash 2.6 this solution brings satisfaction to everyone involved programs relying on foo can find it without any issues and we can still easily identify the actual installed version when the time comes to upgrade to foo dash 2.7 we simply add the new file to our system, delete the existing symbolic link foo and create a new symbolic link that directs to the updated version. This not only resolves the version upgrade problem problem but also allows us to retain both versions on our machine consider a scenario where foo 2.7 introduces a bug in such case we can effortlessly revert to the old version by deleting the symbolic link pointing to the new version and creating a new symbolic link that points back to the previous version all right so in the directory listing above taken from the slash lib directory on a fedora system there is a symbolic named libc.so.6 that is linked to a shared library file named libc-2.6.so. Right. This clever setup ensures that programs searching for libc.so.6 will effectively access the file libc-2.6.so. Creating symbolic links will be covered in the upcoming chapters where we'll learn how to implement this useful feature. So don't worry too much about it in this chapter. All right. Hard links. While discussing links, it is important to mention another type called hard links. Hard links enable files to have multiple names, but they operate differently compared to a symbolic links. In the next chapter, we will delve deeper into the distinctions between symbolic and hard links. All right. So let's summarize the chapter. After concluding our tour, we have gained extensive knowledge about our system. We have explored different files, directories, and their contents. An important aspect to note is the openness of the system. In Linux, numerous crucial files are readily accessible as plain human readable text. Unlike certain proprietary systems, Linux provides transparency by making everything available for examination and study. Alright, so I'll link these notes in the description and please go through these notes and feel free to complete this little exercise over here. So I'll end the video here and in the next video we'll talk about files in directory manipulation. Right. In the meantime, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.